Okay, I think we can start. Yeah. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so let me type start. We can start. Okay, so hello everyone. And then uh, I think that this is my first time to read a chapter in this book club. And then today I'm going to try to cover about the user feedback. Actually, the the main goal of the, this chapter is about the how you can customize and then how you can handle the error messages, you know, because uh, when we try to develop the uh, Shiny app, there is uh, there might be the, some of the some situations about uh, maybe there is uh, some of the error messages, maybe other than the general like a basic syntax error auto automatically generated by the by the R. Maybe we can sometimes customizing about the, our own error messages or maybe try to set up the, some tools or some functions for the validate our input and output and also notification about the how how our our input or output uh, is going on. And also try to try to check try to check about the that status or some progress about the how those processing going on inside the, our shiny app. So this is the what about this is the what chapter eight is for. So how we can so what I would say is in here, I would say how we can validate the our input or our our, uh, our messages and then how we can get the customizing the notification and and then how we can check the our progress bar like of time the consuming time consuming or what's the steps and then also some of the confirmation like uh, whether it is done or not and then uh how I how we can do about the undo the action like uh, how we can cancel that action so in here is actually there is a three different uh our package is gonna be used other than the shiny because uh, shiny is the basic one that we always use and then the shiny feedback is about the handle about our user feedback and then a waiter is about the more like a uh progress bar or some of the uh, how we can um uh, visualize our progress. And then a validate is a kind of a validations kind of a tools gonna be supported. So let's talk about the validation first. Cause the validation is a kind of like a how how we can try to validate our input. So in that case, maybe if we can input the wrong one, maybe that means it actually produced some of the error messages. But the thing is that in case of the that error messages, we will sometimes Thinking about the, how we can customizing those error messages, like a more attractive kind of error message for the more user friendly kind of error messages, so that user can be easily identifying the what is the problem, problem. So and then that's the kind of a thing so we can do. So as you can see, every shiny app try to start with uh, this kind of a handling the user interface kind of a layouts. So it's a page and then a feedback. We, in this case, we're gonna try to use the this feedback option, like a use shiny feedback. And then we can try to set up the default value as a 10. And then uh, we also set up the input value and then text output is the half, like uh, try to try to divide it by the half. And then these are the our basic user layouts. And then uh, in the server, like in the inside the inside the server functions, we just try to say about the reactive and then the inputs uh, divided by uh, input n divided by two gonna be zero like a remainder. If not, we if not even, so in here like a feedback warning kind of functions. So we can actually testing about the this n value and then it is not even, this is a if if conditions and then we can say about the if that's if it is if this one is true 
it actually produced this kind of our um, our our this kind of a message is going going on, and then output half gonna be the render text and then is on half. So as you can see in the in my R screen, so we can actually do this like this, and then when we run the shiny app, we can see this. And then, but the problem in this case is even even if maybe for example, we can, uh, we can click the uh maybe I think that I have to remove the that uh, I have to comment this one first. What is the first um uh, problem of the some first one is maybe if we can try to try to put number nine which is the not even number. It actually gives us about the, our the result anyway, even if we have uh, error messages in here. So how we can deal with uh, these kind of things? So what is the another main goal of the this chapter is how we can use the function called the uh called the uh, what is called the REQ function, which is the required. This one, this one is actually very very tool when we try to handle the our error messages so as you can see here uh, in my R code maybe if we can try to try to put some here like uh, after the warning code we have to keep requiring about the even number so that means we we without without we if we do not in type the even number we cannot we do not do the this kind of uh, calculations. So that's how this one is a little bit different. So when we click, when we run the this app again. So now when we put some seven in here, we don't have any kind of uh, updated result. Actually, before that, we actually supposed to have a 3.5 as a calculation output in here. But now we actually, uh, now Shiny app asks us about the even number to learn the, this calculation. So that means it, it actually does not, does not do the, any kind of a calculations for now. So, so that's the, what, what is the differences about the, about the, this function. And then uh, this REQ function, require function is a very, very useful when we try to handle the data and then uh, control the, our, uh, shiny app, uh, user interface, and then the error messages. Okay. And then also we can also try to do the, by using the REQ functions, we can also try to do the canceling the executions. So how you can do these things is like this. Okay. So for example, when you try to do the changing the our greeting outcome. So here it is maybe I think they close the shiny app. Then I can when I run the this languages outcome and then run the shiny app. It actually shows us about the this language and name outcome and then when we say the english hello hello means hello and then a chain the maori one is a kia uh, kia ora like this or maybe i can also customizing this one as a kind of a maybe korean languages but anyway so these kind of things like uh, in here maybe we, i can say about the korean and then and then I say, oh, at, uh, at the death, maybe when I, uh, when I run the, this algorithm and then try to do that, um, maybe uh, input, output, greetings, I think that three can be possible. But well, anyway, so anyway, this one is what it's about. So, so 
maybe if I can try to have an empty kind of kind of input, that means that there is actually says the error message right here, like a script out of bound in this case. So maybe if we can put the some of the out in the output, we actually put the this kind of a canceling messages. There is a no more no more kind of a error message gonna be comes up right here, in here, okay. So this is the uh, this is the uh, how how things we can control about the uh, about our uh, kind of uh, languages. Maybe I think here maybe I can say Korean. And then maybe when I learn this one, uh, maybe close it first. And when I learn the this command and also learn the shiny with the RQ functions, maybe we don't have any any more kind of that that canceling uh error messages. And, and then Maybe I can say about the hello, and then when I choose Korean, it says 안녕하세요. So that's the how we can learn the, this kind of a shiny output. So any questions so far? Anything? So basically, it's like hiding the other part, I think. Because it's not like an error. It just don't show the no, the, the, the final number. Mm hmm Yeah, right. Cause uh cause uh, that's the kind kind of how it works. Cause uh we don't actually have uh, those kind of error messages and then you know, we just uh, try to keep keep waiting to uh, to the input before we execute the outcome. Or maybe we can actually uh show the some of the error messages if you if we wanted to Want to keep keep asking users to the typing the something, or maybe telling them about the what kind of input they need, and then by using the require functions, we actually holding holding the that uh that calculations or that processing, okay. Until yeah, in this case is is important yeah. then. In the required yeah. function, we're just putting, oh, we need this variable and this other variable before running. Yeah, when right. the other before, okay. it was a true yeah. statement. It was mm -hmm. expecting a true statement. So I think that yeah, right. for Boolean, they expect to be true. Mm -hmm. And for charters, they can be any value. Yeah, right, right. That's true. So mm -hmm. it's a good point. So yeah, that's the how require require function works because uh, and also we can also using about the require function as a validation about the select the data set like for example select the data set and then I see the its contents like uh like here so we can actually set up the UI pages up here like uh, use the shiny feedback and then a text input is the data set and data set name. And then output gonna be the data. This is the main layouts. And then inside the server, we can actually try to try to set up the data set. Like uh, data is reactive and then a require input input data set. And then we can loading the those data set in here. Maybe if that exists. If if it's the existed, that's the kind of a kind of a we can get the those outcome, but if not. It does not. It it actually has a uh, this kind of a uh, error messages like a uh, feedback danger functions, you know. So it, we can check the data set, see if it existing or not, and then uh, if it is it is not it is not existing. It this is the true. It gives you the this kind of error messages, and then until we get the right. Right data set gonna be input. We have we actually wait. Okay, until we get the uh get the right inputs. Okay, so that's the how this works. 
And then how you how you can do this is like uh, in the R screen in here, we can actually run this one and then and then in the shiny app, we can it asks asking about the data set like the iris data set and then now it shows up. Or maybe if we can try to do the wrong data set, it's give us about the error message about the, it is unknown data set and then it ask users to type correctly. Or maybe cars data set, it also give you the, this kind of a data set outcome. Okay. So this is how it works. And then how we can deal with the, this kind of a user feedback and the outcomes. And then also we can using the some of the belly uh some of the uh control the user feedback based on the validating the our outputs, like uh like uh, some of the these simple calculations. So right now in the pre so far we actually control about the how we can control the user feedback about the when they type their input. But right now we actually try to try to create the, some of the error messages or some notifications about the based on the outputs. So in this case, we can actually get the input first, but after the calculation, if there is a, some of the error messages, maybe it does not calculating and then it actually shows us about the, some of the error messages. So how this one does is in here, we can actually calculating about the square and row functions. And then when we learn that this one, actually, if we input the zero and then a transform is the log is a negative or some of the square is a zero. But when we type the negative one and then we can transform in the log, now we have error messages about the, it cannot be negative for this transformation. Same thing for the square, uh, square gonna be the, it does, it, yeah, square root is also the same, right? Cause the square is the one, but square root is, uh, there is a, should be the positive inside the square, square root. So that means it give you, it give us about the, this kind of error messages by using the, by using the, this kind of a, uh, switching or this input kind of messages right here. And then we can try to using the this kind of a validation function. So validate is the more about the controlling the outcome and then give us to the feedback about the outcome. So if computer cannot calculate in those things and then get some error, it actually says about the, this kind of a validation result and then we can customize these things as our own messages rather than the automatically generating the error messages by R, okay? And then the notification is also the same thing. Like uh, some of the, there is a three part of the notifications about the, some transient, uh, transient uh, notification about the automatically disappear within the short amount, fixed amount of time. And then the other one is a notification is the process starts and then remove it, then the process ends. And then a single notification about the seeing the some progressive updates. So in case of the first case, like here, this one is actually about the some of the active when we click the active button like this one, and then it shows about the so wrong, and then a sleep one second. And then farewell and one second. After that, I'll I'll put the gen. It's a German language, and then it's a one second. And then adieu is a is the final one. And then it's gonna be stacking up transient. That's the what the transient notification is about. So in here, in the R screen, when we run the this command. And then when we try to use the shiny app, and then when we click the this one, it says, yeah, every every one second it shows up and then disappears after that. That's the how it works about the transient 
notification. Okay. And then the second one is uh is about the like a removing completion kind of things. And then I actually try to try to do this one, but the thing is I cannot cannot learn the these kind of functions because I'm I'm not sure what the problem is in this one. And then when I try to maybe I think the UI section is like maybe this one. And then when we click this one. Yeah, it does not run anyway. So I'm not sure what is the problem is about. But basically this one is actually about the some of the removing the notification after the reading the data set. But maybe anyone who can succeed to learn this one, maybe just let me know. Cause I didn't I didn't make this one works. So maybe any other idea about the, what's going on about this? Maybe, maybe I can maybe dive on the later, but right now I didn't find the what's wrong with the, this kind of a, how I cannot get the, this server or shiny I'm learning, but anyway. You know, you have the UI to, for the file yeah. path. Yeah. It's like, it's expecting a, fa a path in your, in your directory mm. to read CSV. Okay. Oh, but okay. In your input, you don't have any input file, and also it's like waiting for something nesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe, hold on. Maybe, oh, leading to the data table for an improvement. Lead CSV. Yeah, I. I'm not sure because they in here actually there is a no UI code in here. So maybe I I I'm kind of thinking about it in the previous chapters, maybe there might be the some shiny app that actually included these kind of things, but I'm not sure. So but anyway, so basically what the, this one is about is the kind of a when we try to duration is the no and then a button no and then a that actually says the notification stays until the task is complete. So it is about the just kind of showing that that task is complete. And then uh, until we type, when, until we click the button, it still stays, that notification is uh, still stay there until we click that one. Okay. After the we clicking that one, that one is gonna be disappeared. That's the, another way we can give the users about the notification in the Shiny app. And also progressive updated is a kind of a reading the data set kind of functions. So this one actually works. And then uh, let me show you about the how this works. So this previous updates is a kind of a keep try to like you hit, like you see here, keep telling you about the each status, about the outcome, okay, and then and then we can notify the out in notifying the progress, and then slip one after the one second, and then the next one gonna be showing up after and so on, okay. So that's the how this one works, and then. In here, we can actually see when we look at the, this one, reading the data, the single outcome, and then uh, you can see the automatically changes, and then uh, you will see that these kind of uh, cars data set outcomes coming up, right? But when you, when you just note, please note that before we get the, this kind of data set, we actually, Come, uh, see the notification windows at the bottom about the how 
reading the data and then how those things going on, okay? And then another thing we can also do is the what is called the progress bar about the how our our input and then our processing is a uh, time uh, takes time and how those progress is going on. It is very important sometimes about the we cannot make sure about the the amount of time we have to spend to the do those kind of process. But if we have uh, these kind of uh, progress bars. It's gonna be very useful to see the how see the exact status of the, our our uh, processing within the shiny app. Okay. So so this one is uh, actually looks a little bit complicated when we looking at the code in here, and then after that, and then we can actually set up the, this kind of uh, UI functions in here. And then whenever we run the this code and uh go to this one and then how many steps in the when we say about the 10 or maybe 15, maybe we can go about the this learning, like uh, generating the random numbers, like uh, learning building status can be done. And then point uh point seven is a kind of outcome. So so this one is how this one goes about the, but the, the thing that we can see is by using the, this kind of a read progress, uh, our, uh, read progress kind of functions and then this, uh, simple for loop, we can actually try to dividing about the progress bar that we need for the, for the, that shows about the, how, the time, the, the amount of the progress we actually taking for the hours, you know, for the, some specific task like this, like a, this kind of a progress bar, okay? And then waiter function is a kind of a, kind of a waiting, actually waiting function, like a spinners kind of functions. So in this case, when we say about the spinner is uh, just kind of a keep spinning around, that actually also another way to visualizing about the how our pro process is the learning through through the code. So that's the how this one is about. And then when we click the these things, maybe. I hope that this works. In here. Oh. Oh. This one. In here. And then let me click the this one and then when we click go you can see this kind of a uh, uh spinner's outcome about the progress to the get the sum of the numbers and then a waiter function can be could allows us to the creating the this kind of a spinner functions that actually showing about the waiting kind of a visualization of the waiting for the, within the shiny app Okay, yeah, like this. When whenever we click go, we can get the, these kind of a spinning around kind of a messages. Okay, and then uh and then confirming and undoing kind of things is a kind of a we can confirm the deleting in here. I actually did not do this one personally because this one is actually kind of a delete function about the how some of the files or something. So this one is actually basically about the, how you can creating the, some of the functions about the confirming messages about the, do you want to do the continues? And then do you really want to delete in file kind of things? And then you will see that this kind of a warning. This one is actually kind of a warning, warning notification. 
and then uh, it keep shiny. We can set up the, this kind of a warning notification. Try to double checking about the user's feedback, okay? To prevent to prevent the, some of the accidental kind of a task complete task, okay? So this kind of actually tool or some of the setup inside the shiny app gonna be help the users to uh to clarifying exactly uh, uh clarifying the exactly what they are doing within the shiny app so this one is especially for the, this kind of a deleting file task this one is a very useful when we have a, these kind of a messages and then uh, try to double checking the their their task and then when they still click the deleting it now after that we can delete the sum of the task deleting deleting task are gonna be executed okay and then undoing the action is kind of like a kind of like a, a literally undoing the this kind of a outcome and then also going to the trash is the also another way to the uh to the uh restore about the accidental kind of a mis uh, task mistakes when they try to do the some task and then uh, we want to do the uh, doing these things or that means there is a two way we can do is the we can actually give us about the undoing command or maybe like a windows does we can actually set up the some of the trash uh area functions and then uh, we can try to restore the that task from the trash that's the kind of uh kind of uh, functions we can actually set up in here so this is actually end of the chapter eight because uh i tried to try to follow up the some of the code up here but i have a little bit trouble to the this kind of uh, learning the this code because this uh, not, i'm not familiar with uh, this kind of a uh, code right now so I just kind of a little bit had, had a problem about the struggling to uh to making the this uh code works, but I hope that in the future maybe it's gonna be I can find a way to how this making work and then. But the thing is, in the conceptually, the other things about the these things is uh, uh undoing the notification and then uh, this double checking task is the very good tool. That allows us to allows the users to the double checking the their task, and also preventing the some of the accident accidental mistakes when they doing the some task, and then we can by providing the some of the other options like undoing or some of the trash functions, maybe we can undoing the our previous task, and then go back to the uh, restore the some of the function some of the task going back to the original state so that's the how this one works so i think that this is it